Okay, so I need to demonstrate how to use Getty Images because I need you to use Getty Images. So uh, let's show you where this is. Over here, we're going to sign in. Obviously, we're at Getty Images. We're going to sign in. Hello, sign in. There we go. And uh, currently, your account should look like this. Remember, it's all capital letters when you do this stuff. Same thing for the password. And I'm just going to type in the password here. And, oops, and your password uh, should be located in other places, but I'm making this video available on the internet so uh, we can use this. There we go. It says, welcome student, because I'm being you right now, right? And everybody's going to use this same account. So let's start off by doing a little search here. Okay, and I'll type in, let's do, let's say I want to do a search on pictures of an old man, old man, and I hit search, or I click that search, and now it's got pictures of old men. In fact, it came up with 959 pages of old men, or pictures with old men, so these pictures were tagged that way, and when you click, when you roll over these things, it gives you uh, a rollover picture. Uh, I forget how to turn, oh, wait a minute, I forget how to turn the rollovers off, but there is a way to do that someplace here. I find them annoying. Um, but here's the problem. When you click on these guys, first of all, you might see something here that says view size and price options. Uh, or if you just click on this, you can view that. Uh, but if I click on that picture, for instance, it take, either one of those things, either the green button or just clicking on the picture takes you to this. Now, if you get this thing that says view pricing, you are totally in the wrong place. Okay? Okay. Uh, Getty wants to charge you because Getty is a profit industry. It's a for-profit industry. Well, as such, we don't want that, okay? We don't want to pay any, any money for this because we are poor students and even poor teachers. So, um, as I've mentioned before in class, uh, Getty Images uh, is working with us, the Art Institute. We're the only school that Getty Images works with. So, we don't get to use their entire library of stuff. We get a smaller area. So, um, when we do a search, we have to click on this guy right here, Premium Access Images Only. Now, you'll either see a checkbox here like this, or you might see a pop-up window that has that same thing, Premium Access, uh, when you click in the field. Actually, it, it typically, if I sometimes if these search fields don't show up in the right place, I'll click back here on this thing right here. And when I click on this search field right here, then the Premium Access thing turns on. Just remember, Premium Access, that means us. Okay, so now when I do a search on Old Man, and click search. Comes up with a bunch of pictures, but now I only have 88 pages worth, which is in the neighborhood of 5,000 picture, 5,236 pictures. Okay. Now when I click on this guy, for instance, it gives me a few things. It says premium access download. That tells me we're in the right place, and it gives me some related pictures. If somebody you know took a few pictures of this old guy, and uh, we might want to try this one, for instance. Maybe we we'll, we maybe we like this uh, this picture better. Cool. Okay, then I'm going to download this. And this window is basically telling you it, that it's downloading the biggest picture available. Okay, now, it right now, oh, there it is. There's my preview. You can see what this looks like. Cool. It's a rather big image. It is 2,800 uh, by 3,500 pixels at 300, pi 300 pixels per inch. So this is huge, and it's RGB. Okay, so... What happens is, uh, if you don't have that checked and you go get a picture, then it's going to give you another thing like here that says, uh, which size do you want? Do you want the small size, which is 181 kilobytes, or you can get the large size? And to my mo to, for my money, I would say just get the large size. It makes your life easier. In fact, just always download the largest file available. That would make your life a lot easier as well. So now it downloads, and it shows up over here in my downloads window. Remember, uh, whatever browser you're using will have some sort of downloads kind of thing to show you uh, what's being downloaded. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to show you was, let's close out of here. Close, close, there we go, cool. Is uh, down at the bottom of my page, it says Lightbox. Now, um, actually I happen to be in someone else's Lightbox right now, but you can personalize your own Lightbox. Okay, so let's say that I want to hide my Lightbox, I would click there. If I want to show my light box, it's there. Well, what is a light box? Well, whoever this uh, Dominguez, Domingo is, um, 
they are basically using the lightbox to just kind of look through perhaps their 88 pages or more and find pictures that they might use for their own purposes and then uh, be able to download download them after they've reviewed them okay because you don't want to go through you know 50 pictures and then realize oh I want to go back and find that other picture that I saw of the old man with his with his hands on his hips well maybe that was back on page one maybe it was back on page 22 if you don't remember then the light box makes it very handy because I could I could do this I could go actually I do have a light box uh, mine is mine is this guy right here Hannibal Lecter so if I want to uh, there's some other pictures that I've already previewed if I want to get this old man for instance I could go to this icon down here that says add to light box let it think about it for a second and now that one shows up there so as I'm reviewing my pictures seeing which ones I want I can always go back here and hit download or I can actually click on this one right here and click on download if I want that one okay now how do you make a light box great question let's go to my account go down to light boxes create a new light box and you get this window that would should show up any second here now come on there you go and uh, it says light box name is the only one that has a field that is got a red required thing on it so you know put whatever name you want in there it doesn't even have to be your name it's just something that you can identify and then click save you don't need to fill in the client name or the project name it's just a matter of personal location for you okay so that's pretty much it are you sure you want to close this window yes I do okay that's pretty much it use your Getty images oh I'm sorry there is one more thing duh uh, notice the file that's over here these files they have names dv 1911 these are all high quality JPEGs when you are saving your files and you're actually using them in your Photoshop documents I want you to do citation just like you would in a paper document I want you to uh, let's say you go to Photoshop now I'm, I happen to have this one open right now let's just use this one and uh, let's say uh, I'm gonna change my tool come on there we go to the note tool and when I click here I'm basically leaving a little yellow sticky and I can go over and leave my note over here so let's say that I use the file that was one of, one of the old men that was called DV 191110421042 JPEG this is how I can go look up which files you've used I can go look in Getty and say oh this student used this particular file in here and I'm just double checking because I don't as I said I don't want students using uh, just ripped off stuff from the internet okay so that's how you cite your files and hopefully that's very helpful